Good evening. Good evening. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good, we got her okay. yesterday. We got Good evening, Radha. <coughs> so I guess all of you have attended all the five, all the four sessions so far, and today is the fifth, I suppose. Yes, Anita. Yeah. Attend it all. Yeah. Okay, send me, I, I'm sure all of you have my numbers, right? Send me what kind of sessions you will want or you will uh, you will uh, wish for. Just let me know and I'll we'll try and get it for you guys. Sure. Thanks. Welcome. Can we also have the session on will make how to make a will repeated? Uh, I know. Nasreen, is that you? Yes, yes, Anita. Nasreen, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure, Nasreen. Yeah, we are. The class is coming up next week, Nasreen. On uh, will, will, yes, yes. how to write your will. Okay. Yeah. Huh. And okay. in fact, I would like you to do the session on that living will as well, if if that's possible. The you living will one, one separately. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. do that. Yeah. Yeah, that you did a great one last time. Okay, I think we are on time. Thank you, everyone, for joining us here today. It's been lovely um, having you all for four days. And yes, another. Really wonderful information session coming up today with Dr. Nene. And uh, let me uh, start off with the introduction. So can Nandini, can you share this slide, please? Just a minute. Yeah. And as always, please keep yourselves on mute. We'll uh, have Dr. N uh, Nene speak first. And then you can uh, put in all your questions on the chat. I'll try and take all of them as much as we can uh, before we finish the session. Uh, so we'll, let's keep it. You keep putting your sessions, uh, questions, and towards the end, we'll take all your questions. So today is thriving with musculoskeletal health, managing common conditions with confidence. This is with Dr. Abe Nene. Yeah. And uh, another introduction to get set up. We are on a mission to help those over 55 learn new skills, connect with others, and unlock new life experiences, which I hope and I know that you guys are definitely experiencing. Our goal is to reduce isolation, loneliness, and equip the community with tools, knowledge to age independently and in place. If any of you have any more ideas to make this better and uh, to reduce the loneliness, isolation, or anything concerned with the topic, do please get in touch with me. Our community engages in classes online as well as offline activities like traveling together over longer, longer and shorter day trips as well. And if you'd like to go anywhere and if you have a group, again, do get in touch with me. About today's speaker, like somebody said, I, he's like quite well known and I'm sure most of you from Mumbai know him. He's Dr. Abenene, a TN Medical College alumnus, graduated as a medical doctor in 1995 and completed his postgraduate training in orthopedic surgery in 1998 from the University of Mumbai. With years of training in spine surgery for various centers worldwide, he currently practices as a spine surgeon at the We Are Spine Group affiliated with several corporate hospitals in Mumbai. His practice lies in pediatric spinal deformity, spinal tumor reconstruction, tuberculosis, and the osteoporotic spine. Dr. Nene is the Asia-Pacific Chair-Elect of AOS Spine, a leading academic organization in the world. So thank you so much, doctor, for accepting to come and uh, give us this talk. Uh, truly appreciate it, and we're looking forward to uh, what you have to tell us today. So let me let's spotlight, Doctor. Yeah. So the pleasure is entirely mine, and thank you for having me over. And since I I noticed that this is for a group of people above fifty five, I'm almost going to make the cut very soon. So I hope that I'm going to be on the other side. Um, you know, listening to some other great speakers. The so, uh, you know, uh, the qu key question is why does a back surgeon get an opportunity to talk in a group like this about musculoskeletal health when, when uh, you're a subspecialist? Now, this is the reason that almost everyone gets back pain. 
I mean, this this is a cliched slide. The world is divided into three groups of people: those who have back pain, those who've had back pain, and those who will have back pain. But um, more relevantly, the you know the top causes for a doctor consult worldwide includes um, you know back problems, and uh, this unfortunately is more in adults than children. So everyone here in this group, uh, I think, has has been privy to this sooner or later or sometime or the other in their life. And uh, again, unfortunately, the commonest cause of back pain is aging. And since we are here talking about aging and about, you know, how to grow, grow up smarter and stronger, uh, this then becomes relevant. Because this is my area of interest or expertise, uh, I'm going to use the spine as the model to kind of take you around how the philosophy of degeneration in the musculoskeletal system goes. But uh, one thing's for sure that, you know, you may have a strong heart and you may have a strong liver and a strong and strong lungs. But if the if your you know, the body that you live in is not holding up, then uh, serious trouble arises as you cross the 70, year, year, you know, 70 years age mark. And, you know, uh, people are living longer and people are living healthier. And that's where this problem comes in. So uh, it is becoming a focus problem of, um, you know, in the Western world. And we are now no longer a third world country. So our life expectancy has gone beyond 85 in the urban Indian population. So I think all of us should, uh, you know, should pay attention to the takeaways from, you know, the next few slides. And those all of us includes me. And I walk the talk and I'm going to tell you, you know, in which way you can do that yourself. Now, uh, degeneration is a process where there's a wear and tear of all mobile or loaded tissues. So typically in your musculoskeletal system, there's the joints and the joint is where two bones meet. These bones are designed to share loads, just like the, you know, the column that holds up the, um, the Bandra C link. However, a joint is a mobile unit compared to a column. And hence, this mobility has to be brought about by a softer structure. This softer structure is generically called a cartilage. In different uh, areas, it's known differently. But like, for example, in the spine, the cartilage is a disc. But eventually, it is a spongy structure which is a derived of blood supply. It has lesser blood supply than the rest of the living tissue. And um, it undergoes degeneration due to mechanical loading rather than due to disease. So, uh, so then there is the spine, there's the knees and there's the hips. These are the three common loaded areas in your, in your body which undergo wear and tear. And um, to, to loop you back to, uh, uh, because I'm going to use the spine as the, as the key, key area to describe degeneration. And again, why the spine? Because unlike other, uh, other musculoskeletal parts of your body, like the shoulders or the hips or the knees, the spine gets loaded even when you're seated. So you're loading your back uh, 18 hours of the day, except for those six hours when you're uh, horizontal. So literally the back is the most affected in terms of degenerative disorders, even more than the knees. And that statistic uh, holds true. So in your back, as you all know, there's a cervical spine up here. The specificity of the cervical spine is it's a extremely mobile spine. It moves in 360 degrees of freedom. And the nerve inside is far more um, uh, sensitive than the other part of the spine. Uh, in a good way, it is loaded less, but as you can, uh, you know, as you can imagine, there's this big globe sitting on it and uh, it is slightly biomechanically challenged because it's a narrow structure holding up a big, big ball. It's like the atlas that's holding the, you know, earth on the back, on, on his back. So there are injuries that are very specific to the neck. And, um, well, you know, what derives out of this is that uh, most of us use our necks in a tilted manner. So even many of you, when you're watching this telecast, you'll have tilted your heads down and that duplicates or doubles the load on your neck. And that, that becomes the key issue about degeneration in the neck. The middle back, which is the thoracic spine, that is the fixed part of the back, which does not move. And it uh, holds in the important lungs and the uh, heart. And hence, uh, it should not be mobile. So there's no movement transmitted on, on these vital structures. And then this gives like a keystone to the mobile uh, spine at the top and at the bottom. And then the lumbar spine, which is the lower back, is the workhorse because it's mobile as well as weight bearing. And uh, as mentioned before, it's loaded even when you're seated. In fact, the load on the back is 2x when you sit compared to when you stand. Uh, now, in the back, the load bearing structures are not the bones, but the discs in between the bones. And these discs are like spongy tissue. So the, uh, they have this, uh, you know, high hydraulic pressure, uh, which is uh, water in many ways, harnessed by protein. And this gives like a a great shape memory to this structure and uh, hence on uh, it is said that we uh, load our backs 
six million loading cycles every year, which is a whole, you know, it's a, it's a huge amount of loading. No artificially made structure can withstand this kind of loading. So uh, hats off to God for making the back, but uh, whoever made it has, uh, it's a very, very unique design. And despite all this, the back needs to protect the nerves and still look very, very sexy. So, you know, the, the amount of, uh, uh, you know, the amount of um, uh, workload that the back has is uh, uniquely high and uh, which is why the back undergoes degeneration. And this degeneration un uh, happens at the level of the disc. So the disc is the, the structure that's being continuously loaded. And as you can imagine, it gets beaten out of its shape memory. So uh, dehydration happens. So the example that, uh, you know, that will appeal to you is that when you keep using a certain sofa in your house, the sponge starts to lose its tenacity and then the uh, foam starts to dry up and loses its shape memory. That's exactly what happens to the disc and to all the cartilages in your body, including the knees, including the hips, including the back. And uh, as is depicted on this diagrammatic, um, you know, interpretation, the bones start to get closer to each other. And on the x-ray, the gap between the bones reduces. And uh, in common parlance, people say gap come ho gaya. But actually, it is not the gap. It is the disc that has actually shrunk. The, the meaning of shrunk is that it has lost its capacity to hold loads. And hence, there's this function. It's like a weak bearing in your back. And now when you load your back, it no longer holds its shape. It tends to collapse and it tends to give way. Just like that old sofa here. And... Uh, this then leads to all the problems. The initial problem is just that the fulcrum of your column is weak. So when you load your back, you start to hurt. Eventually, the bones start to rub against each other. So there's arthritis of the joint. Uh, and that is that gives you intense back pain. And then eventually, you know, as sorry, this slide has turned out bad. But eventually, the nerves inside start to crumple. Because unlike the knee or the hip or the ankle, uh, this structure actually harnesses the nerve. So... You, you don't get only mechanical structural pain, but you also get crimpling or, the, or you know, crumpling of nerves inside, which starts to give you pain down the leg and eventually dysfunction in the leg. So the typical fallout of this process of degeneration is that our body starts to stoop because the, you know, the, the wedges that were holding the, the body up are no longer holding it up. So the body begins to stoop forward. When it stoops forward, the load doubles. And the degeneration process, um, you know, further escalates. And um, then the nerves start to come in the mix. And then your legs start to dysfunction. So your walking capacity and standing capacity, the amount of time that you can use your legs uh, starts to reduce dramatically. And um, uh, if if anybody identifies with this, you know, you've got to take punitive action before it gets out of control. Because this leads to surgical problems. And surgery on an octogenarian is never fun for both both sides of the parties or in mean, both parties so you got to prevent these problems the good news here is um, you can tackle this issue by using your muscles so uh, you think of your back or any joint for that matter in your body like the mast of a ship the mast holds itself up when the ship is in the you know in the bay but when the ship gets out in the in the winds the mast will not hold itself unless the ropes tighten so these are the dynamic supporters and those are our muscles and they're you know, a humongous quantity of muscle in your body, it's up to you to maintain them. So if your back is giving way, so if your back is no longer taking that 50% load, if your muscles come to the party and they take that, they take the slack. So the back is performing at 30%, the muscles can perform at 70% and you can not only not get back pain, but you can prevent further degeneration. The cascade of degeneration can be prevented. So we, you know, cry out of roof, rooftops, uh, that if you can prehabilitate, which means that before you get back pain, you start working on your muscles, start working on your body weight, you will not get back pain. And if you don't get back pain, you know, everything is sorted. There's no question of surgery and nerves getting in the picture, etc. It's like if you had a, if you had a minus one number and you, in the, at the right time, wore the plus one uh, lenses or the specs, your number will no longer get worse. You will see better and everything is sorted because the minus one number is never going to improve by itself. There are no medicines that can improve it. Similarly, the degeneration in your body cannot be reversed. At best, it, you can slow down the progress. So why not invest in it right at the top? I hope I'm getting across clearly. And honestly, I'm happy for you to unmute and ask questions. But if the system of the of the session is such that you keep the questions for the end, please make your the little notes because uh, I think the discussion is what will spurn out much more information than just a one-way talk. 
So as the weakened spinal column collapses, so in this MRI picture here, what you see is, if you can see my cursor, you see these blocks, these are the bones. And then the white structure in between the bones are, are the discs. And then this long white tube is the nerve. If you see the lower three discs look black and they look successively flattened. So that's exactly what degeneration does. Blackness signifies lack of water. So the, the, the third disc from the bottom is dehydrated, but still not, not lost its shape. But the lowest disc has even lost its shape, leading to compression of um, you know the nerves. And uh, the, the person, you see the skeleton on the right, is now losing his uh, verticalness and he's falling off because the base of the column is now loose. The bearings at the base of the column are no longer holding the column up. And um, what would logically help this is this little, uh, little guy there, which actually is depicting the abdominal muscles. So if your abdominal muscle, so at this point, I would beseech all of you to just suck in your stomach as you sit down. Just be upright and you'll see. So what you're effectively doing is that from a slouched position, you're pulling yourself up by sucking in your stomach and your back feels absolutely rested because the stomach muscles then take the load off the back. And that's one uh, easy tip for everyone. Whenever you're sitting long or whenever you're doing anything that's strenuous, suck, suck the stomach in and the back will be offloaded and it'll be a position of vantage for your back. Uh, similarly, back extensor muscles, uh, uh, the back muscles, they act like a tie beam and they hold you up. Um, if The long and short of this is that when a joint undergoes wear and tear, it is out of your control because you're using the joint. It is expected to wear and tear. Okay, so it's ex expected to go south. What is the best strategy? So there's stem cells, there's funny injections that are doing the rounds, there are braces, there are medications. Uh, I must rush in to tell you that none of this works. This has been proven not to work. We still don't have a single remedy to reverse joint degeneration. Full stop. Dubara mat puchna. Because a lot of people are making a quick buck on these, um, you know, on these pills or on these injections in the joint, but they really don't reverse the cartilage. Some of them can numb the cartilage so you don't get the pain. So the only realistic strategy is to offload the cartilage, which means is to substitute a weak joint by strong muscles and muscles have a, have an ability to regenerate at any age. So amongst your musculoskeletal system in your body, which is your bones, your cartilage, your joints, your ligaments, your, your muscles are the only unit that can actually regenerate compared to the others, which can only degenerate. So if this statement makes sense to you, you know, pick up your weights and start doing some muscle building right away, because that's what's going to bail you out. So this is the only strategy that we have that's proven. And hence, uh, even at, you know, at any age, if you, if you work out, of course, the, I mean, common sense tells you that you don't want to do some workouts at a certain age. For example, uh, one of the common reasons why we get uh, patients with acute back pain, elderly patients are that they say that uh, someone suggested I suddenly start doing yoga and for 60 years, I've never done yoga. And I suddenly start doing forward bends or backward arches. My, my bones are rusty they will snap and my joints will snap and hurt. So don't take up exercises without supervision. And we are all here to help you to tell you which exercises are easy. But uh, a simple way of, of uh, explaining is that don't do range exercises as you do when you're getting into an exercise form at a later age. If you've always been doing yoga, be my guest. But um, yoga is a range of motion exercise. Um, heavy lifting or heavy impact activities can also damage you when you uh, you know start them late in your life, it's easier to do what we call isometric exercises where movement is less, but muscle contraction is high. So you're trying to strengthen the muscle without undergoing a range of motion. You're avoiding compound workouts where three or four muscle groups are acting together. You're avoiding high impact and you're avoiding heavy loading. Uh, that is what you need to do. So the magic mantra for all of you, including me, is work on four verticals independent of each other. Strength building, which is resistance training. You have to pull or push or lift. That's resistance building to tighten the tighten your muscles, which are going loose. Stamina building, which is cardio, which works on the red fibers of your body. Strength building works on the white fibers of your muscles. Stamina building. So cardio, like going for a brisk walk or doing a, you know, a cycling session in the gym or doing a session on a cross trainer. All these help build the white, the red fibers, which last you the whole day. White fibers help, you know, uh, help give you strength in a given moment. For example, if you stumble and start to fall, the muscle will suddenly contract and stop you from falling. That is strength muscle. But 
to to sustain your vertical uh, posture all day you need stamina so you cannot say that i've done my workout in the gym so i don't need to go for my walk or vice versa they're independent of each other the third is balance it is uh, not not uh, popular uh, this fact is not popular but we all lose our balancing mechanism as we grow older and hence some form of a balance exercise one leg standing tight rope walking on the floor a bozo ball some form of a balance exercise should be a part of your regimen and then nutrition uh, enough can't be said about nutrition uh, even weight, weight gain is as bad as weight loss once you cross that 65 70 year mark weight loss after 65 or 70 is uh, actually translates to muscle loss you can rarely lose a uh, pre-existent fat after 70 years so if you're losing weight after 70 you should be wary of course if you're gaining weight there's a there's a problem there and invariably in our community a lot of vegetarians including myself we fall short of proteins so um, pay more attention to the kind of nutrition you're having so if you work on these four verticals you know over and over again you will get it right and uh, you know you will grow older better now what is the scene spoiler if you take care of all this are you insuring yourself well you're not really insuring yourself because there's something called osteoporosis that's going on in the background unfortunately which is out of your control it's a genetically powered condition and um, i was snooping in when you all were chatting before the session started and i noticed that there were a majority of you are lovely ladies and unfortunately uh, you're blessed with great brains great beauty but also with osteoporosis because women have this um, you know have this unique feature of menopause where the body has been working with an estrogen content for 40 or 50 years and then suddenly in a matter of 6 or 8 months that is completely removed from your body for the good of course but the big effect it has is that it starts sucking out the mineral content and the bone content uh, in your skeleton and the muscle content in your muscle so you start suddenly dropping down on your musculoskeletal health and your bones start to become porous uh, after menopause in men the same thing happens at about 70 so here are some facts um, there's a common uh, you know um, misidentity that uh, calcium deficiency is the same as osteoporosis it, it is not and you will understand this in um, in the slide that follows in your uh, bone there are these columns and bones so think of a building that's being built where initially the columns and the slabs came up that's the red and the black lines on this diagram and then you fill it up with cement and plaster which is the calcium and the vitamin and the you know proteins etc so that really is the filler it is not the base uh, you know the strength or the weight bearing uh, structure of your bone and um, when you don't have calcium or when you are short of vitamin d these yellow dots start to dry up but the beams and columns are undisturbed so merely by consuming the you know the deficient vitamin or the deficient structure or uh, def deficient um, uh, you know mineral calcium vitamin d protein whatever vitamin c you start filling up the bone so osteomalacia is equal to calcium oblique vitamin d deficiency it is common in younger people because in them the beams and columns have not yet dried up and it can be easily corrected just by oral supplementation but osteoporosis is completely different uh it's where the beams and columns they start to dry up which means the red and the, the black lines become less uh, you know dense and no matter how much calcium you take there's no place for this calcium to hang in and this is a change in the quality of the bone rather than the quantity of the bone and it comes to a point where the bone actually implodes so just like the old building in bhendi bazaar just gave way you know these bones just give way without you doing anything it could just be a little cough or a car going over a bumper and you your bone just cracks and these are called insufficiency fractures where the bone has give caved in not because of uh, what you did but because of the bones going soft uh, this is a very 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 common occurrence in orthopedic practice i think most of us who see you know maybe 30 patients a day are seeing one new osteoporotic fracture every day and you know there are uh, maybe 40 or 50 spine surgeons in the city so you can imagine how what's the turnover of these fractures and um, if these unfortunately occur in the wrist or the shoulder or the hip you need surgery for that in the spine you normally get your stern warning and you need to start treatment before the other bones start to collapse uh, again another misnomer is i have got osteoporosis of the spine that's not true the osteoporosis is a systemic condition which affects all the bones in your body and then there is no real treatment for osteoporosis by the time osteoporosis comes to light it's already gone out too far so there's no nothing that we have in our armamentarium to reverse osteoporosis 
and hence the best treatment is actually prevention. Um, uh, for this, a little bit of gyan about bo bo the bone turnover cycle. So as we as we are born, there's new bone being laid and old bone being removed. And uh, initially, the amount of bone that's being laid in, so that's the first part of this um, of this cycle. Th there's more bone being laid in than removed, and hence we grow in size. In adult life, which is between 20 and 45 years of age, then equal uh, removal and equal you know, uh, conditioning of new bones. So there's an equal turnover. And then at menopause in women, there's a steep drop because the laying down of new bone stops and the removal of old bone doubles because there's no estrogen left anymore. While in males, the slope is very slow. The green is the male slope. They both meet at 70. But uh, the, that period between 50 and 70, which unfortunately is a very, very active period of our life, but uh, women get challenged musculoskeletally. So the, the thumb rule is that everyone should have a bone density test and a screening of osteoporosis once menopause happens because it's a rule. It's not an exception. How much is the, is the question? So, uh, and even at 50, you can do stuff to, you know, to uh, help your osteoporosis, but really the best time to prevent osteoporosis in the growing years. And this is the information you want to give your kids and their kids that they need to be doing, um, you know, weight-bearing workouts and not be on video games only. They need to be loading their backs and their bodies to for their uh, bones to turn over. And of course, eat a healthy diet. Um, the diagnosis of osteoporosis, of course, we use the DEXA. Most of you must be familiar with it. But that's just one of several screening methods. And the DEXA is not a end-all of diagnosing osteoporosis. Um Along with osteoporosis, what does not come with a big ticket is sarcopenia. And that actually affects us much more. So uh, Anita, I'm on my last few slides. So we'll, we'll oh, finish okay, off. Fine. We'll wait then. Yeah. So sarcopenia is where the muscles start to shrink equally and the muscle support goes away. And what we were actually uh, working on to prevent our degeneration actually now uh, you know gives way and we are no longer... so. The, the magic mantra after after 50 or 70 is aside of those four, you want to also treat osteoporosis. And then finally, frailty. And this is important because of the goal of uh, uh, Get Set Up is to actually uh, avoid frailty. You know, frailty is a general decline in your condition. So it's not only a musculoskeletal syndrome, but it's also a psychological and a social syndrome where elderly people get isolated. They live alone. They have dementia. They have... You know, small, small things add up and uh, uh, this gives rise to uh, a condition where the body becomes very, very um, uh, poorly responsive to challenges. And uh, this has now become the focus of the entire musculoskeletal world. And we are looking at frailty as a tool to decide, you know, how what kind of treatment you, you give this person. And you don't just look at that person's age. And uh, most research around shows that uh, frailty has a direct the impact on how you deal with uh, injuries. So my last slide says that fitness and exercise is a way of life. You want to take care of the body because that's the only place you have to live in all your life and prehabilitation. So most of you hopefully don't have any problems, but before you get those problems, start working on the muscles, start working on, you know, how you, uh, how you uh, use your postures and your positions and, um, you know, prevent problems. And if you hear me often enough, my business will be happily less. So thank you for uh, for a patient hearing. Yes, doctor. So let me uh, take questions. If anybody wants to ask question, you can also raise your hand and I can unmute you. So there is one which uh, is asking how to reverse muscle mass. So um, the three point program to reverse uh, muscle mass is uh, to think of it as a factory. The factory is not working. So medicines, which we give based on investigations and clinical evaluation, start the factory. These are medicines for osteoporosis. The factory is working, but if there are no raw materials, there's no point. So raw materials are calcium, uh, vitamin D and proteins essentially, but even micronutrients. So nutrition, medication, and then the demand. If the factory is working, the raw material is coming, but there's no demand in the market, there's going to be no production. The demand comes with exercises which means that you have to do exercises that challenge your muscle. Your muscle should want to grow. Otherwise, there's no point. So the three-point program is nutrition, uh, medication, and exercise. And Jiro, you can go ahead and ask. You can unmute and ask your question. Jiro? Uh, okay. Deepika, is there any relation between 
protuberant abdomen and protuberant abdomen yeah a hundred percent relation it's a hundred percent relation most back pains can be treated by making your abdomen flat so i asked you during the lecture you can try that again if you've been seated for the last 30 minutes just suck your stomach and sit down just pull your stomach in raise your chest and your back will be offloaded so the abdominal muscles are the main supporters of your spine because back pain happens because your back tends to tilt forward so i mean it's a 100% correlation so it's not only weight it is also tone of your muscle they both go hand in hand hey kavita go Hello. ahead ask kavita yes, doctor i wanted to ask you that i have suffered uh, in 2019 breast cancer but it was not even on the first stage so i have taken four chemos and uh, 15 radiations and after that my spine has tilted a bit though i am doing regular exercises but uh, what should i do to prevent further damage so i'm happy that your cancer got treated on time and now yes. you have a big long life ahead of you and you cannot yeah. afford a tilted spine okay yeah. so uh, what happens is that the treatment of cancer involves some destructive medication which is yes. for the good but it tends to eat up a lot of your uh, healthy tissue yeah so i took medicine for 5 years 5 years yeah yeah but Hormonal it was that therapy. was high priority so musculoskeletal health comes lower down in priority but now okay. that you're sorted you need to you know re reboot and figure out what uh, you know what essentials are missing in your in this loop the raw materials uh -huh. the medication uh -huh. so in short we get an osteoporosis profiling we often do an mri scan to make sure that you're in good yes. position to start exercises and your nerves yes. are not on tender hooks and uh, then we start a rehab program but essentially it's a rehab program one of mm -hmm. the easy rehab programs for older people who already have developed tilts etc is uh, aqua therapy aqua therapy is okay. where you are working or doing exercises under water so all the downsides mm -hmm. of loading go away because there's no the gravity gets eliminated mm -hmm. So yes. um, I mean I'm just giving you very simple tips but essentially if, if it's done I in the right way I did a DEXA scan but they said that your DEXA scan is of a 45 year old person I don't know how but that you know, much number, that is numbers true. matter and uh, the huh. DEXA is uh, you know overused we think of the DEXA as the okay. only tool but when okay. you look at uh, the WHO criteria involves a frac scoring so even things like if have you lost weight recently You yes, lost muscle. Have you lost um, capacity to do work in the house? Yes. Do you feel yes. tired sooner? Yes. Um, yes. Are you looking bent? Have you lost height? So all these no, are equal no. stakeholders no. to uh, you know to the diagnosis of osteoporosis, and we just hang our hat on that DEXA. So your DEXA okay. may be minus one point five, but if any of these are positive, you still need treatment uh, for osteoporosis. Uh -huh. I feel weak. I can't work for a long time. I want to sit down. I can't stand for long. I want to sit down. I can't walk. I want to sit down much. Like yeah, for ten yeah, yeah. fifteen minutes is okay, but yeah. I should continue with the exercises, right? You need to. I'm very sure you need to start medicines for osteoporosis. Add okay. calcium, vitamin. Make sure that a nutritionist is in the game to make sure that you're eating okay. the right amount of foods, and then okay. add exercise under supervision. All this okay. is a lot of headache for the first three or six months. After huh. that, you're on autopilot. So I'm not asking okay. you to get involved with medical care. I'm just saying get guidance, and then it's autopilot. Okay. But if you start okay. doing the wrong exercises, or if you're doing inadequate yes. exercises, that's not good enough. Also. Okay. Okay. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, Thank you doctor. That was nice. But uh, kindly request the people to ask general questions and not personal ones because that will help everyone. Uh, Kavita, go ahead and ask your question. I was just asking my calf personal starts paining when I run. So should uh, something else to be done? What to be done properly? Uh, I am assuming you are a road runner. So ca yeah. calf pain is the commonest cause of calf pain in road runners is uh, in in improper footwear. So yeah. the height of the sole. So your yeah. sole has two components. This is a question that's not related to this talk, but I run yeah. myself, so I know. So the sole has a drop, which means the heel to foot ratio yes. is what determines if you're going to get calf pain. So personally, I changed uh, my shoes into full flats, zero drop okay. shoes, and my calf pain went away. But the other way to do it is to condition your calf, and of course, make sure your vitamin D levels are all right. They are all right. Such a nice information I got today. Thank about you about the sole. Thank you so much.
another question is is there any relation oh, that we've already done so could you tell about some muscle strengthening exercises for 60 year old female so you know the, uh, uh, they are uh, like it's difficult to demonstrate them here and uh, uh, Anita, just going forward, no, I think there are two people who, because I heard you all talking of living will, the okay. doctor who uh, who made that living will, you know, okay. uh, he is a friend of mine and I can connect him to Kapil uh, Ashwini and we can, uh, you know, have him about yeah. the will, but that's Absolutely. separate. We yeah. must have a, a good physical therapist do a yeah. demonstrative talk where yeah. she's actually possibly demonstrating or at least showing pictures of exercises. Yes. But in a nutshell... Uh, amongst the generic exercises, all water-based exercises are okay. Amongst the cardio, low-impact cardio, so spinning on a cycle, walking on a treadmill or a cross-trainer is okay. And Pilates-based exercise where there's no range of movement involved, but you're tightening your muscles and loosening them at on spot. So if, it would, if I have to work on these muscles, I'm not doing this, but I'm doing that. So resistance on at place. These are called isometric exercises. Personally, I would require, because this is not enough for you to get it right. So what you could do is call in a physio. The physio comes in once or twice to your home, teaches you the right things, and then you're on your own. But don't do it unsupervised if you're not used to it. Okay. Is there anything in nutrition that we can consume to improve bone density? Well, I think for the most of us on the screen, that's long past. Because uh, you sh we should have done it before we were 35. But today also, uh, you must be sure of your protein carbohydrate component. Again, I'm giving you a, a block headline and a good nutritionist can see through this because there's a lot of micronutrients. There's a new, you know, new whole, uh, whole new thing talking about magnesium and about, uh, uh, you know, selenium and these kind of small nutrients. But Mota Moti, it is good amount of proteins in your diet. The requirement is one gram per kilogram body weight. And just FYI, a bowl of dal is six grams alone only. And, a, and an egg is 6 to 9 grams only. So you cannot match that 60 or 70 grams in your diet unless you're a heavy non-vegetarian. If you're a vegetarian like me, we mostly add sattu powder. So sattu is like chane ka dal, which uh, is marketed by the Biharis. Because mm -hmm. all the Bihari workers, they, they live their life on sattu. They just get up in the morning, have a glass. So that's 24 grams of protein. Or whey protein is not a bad word. Whey protein is a natural uh, protein, which is derived from milk, from casein. And uh, the advantage of whey protein is that it has low carbs. So you don't become fat if you if you care and uh, you just get protein. The problem with high protein consumption is three. One is, of course, the feeling of gaseousness. So if you're not used to it, you want to start with smaller doses and come to stead. The other is uric acid can get precipitated and you can get joint pains. And the third is that if you're creatinine, which means your kidney function is at the borderline, you want to consult your nephrologist before you suddenly you know ramp up on your protein intake. Thank you, doctor. Now, any vitamins to improve balance? No vitamins can improve balance. It's only exercises of balance. So a walk won't improve balance. Doing a heavy push-up won't. They're balance exercises. So what I mentioned, one leg standing is a simple one. Personally, I do the shirshasan, headstand. The headstand is probably the mother of all asans that can, you know, give you balance. Uh, else you can just do you know, rope, rope walk, what we say, walk on a longer line in your, in your tiles without support. Initially, you may need support of both the hands on the side. Eventually, you can go off. And then bozo balls or, you know, those balance balls. These are the kind of exercises that are balance exercises. All right. Because uh, balance comes from a complex neuromuscular, um, you know, circuit. There's no medicine that can change it. And over time, this neuromuscular circuit, which is so complex, it's only present in humans. And maybe monkeys, but many others don't have it. Um, this starts to wear out fast. It's a very highly evolved system. And it's out of our control. Thank you. What is a proper test for osteoporosis? So like I said, the DEXA test, is a. it gives you a metric. It gives you a number. But it's one of 10 tests. So those of you who are internet savvy, you can look at the FRAX criteria. F-R-A-X. There are 10 criteria. Uh, so the questions I would ask you if you ask me, am I osteoporosis, uh, osteoporotic is one is, of course, I'd see your DEXA score, but I'd ask you, have you recently lost weight? Have you lost muscle mass? Which means does your uh, shirt sleeve feel uh, loser of your, or the same pant feel loose? Have you lost height? Do you feel stooped? Have you recently had a fracture? Does your mother, did your mother suffer from osteoporosis? Did she have fractures at 60? 
and um, have you been on any medication, anti-epileptic steroids, uh, you know, anti-asthma, some of them. And, um, uh, uh, you know, do you get bone pains? Do you feel tired? Do you feel lethargic? And is your capacity to do X amount of work gone down, which means that I could work in the kitchen for seven hours at a go and now in two hours, I need a break. So all these put together will make me diagnose you as an, as an osteoporotic. And we always, I, I personally would be more aggressive uh, air on the aggressive side to treat osteoporosis rather than wait for things to go bad because it's famously the uh, a silent disease and it only comes to light when the bone breaks and by then it's too long gone and you know you really can't do much it's just salvage hydroforce 150 will it help in osteoporosis so amongst the three medication groups and a fourth one is coming at the end of the month so there are three medical uh, medication groups right now hydroforce or alendronates are the, or ibendronates, they are the lowest set of medicines or the least effective set of medicines. So they are normally used uh, uh, in the early part of your osteo, which means that you turn 50 and you casually do a, a DEXA test because the doctor said that after menopause, you need to do it. And it starts showing bad numbers. You don't have any other symptoms. That's the time that you take hydrofos. So uh, you don't take it uh, at 75 once your numbers are low and all your symptoms are rife. So uh, the reason why we go through the process of giving the lowest medicine first, then the next, and then the next, and not directly give you the best available resource is because we are limited by the US FDA guidelines on the number of years we can give you these medicines for. So all of us, as of today, have a net 18 or 19 years of available medicines for osteoporosis. So you want to use them discretionally because if you start at 50 you're done at 70 and that's when you really need your medicines. So that's the reason why we try to be conjuice. We try to go slow on giving you medicines. So, uh, you know, in a nutshell, hydrofos is one of the medicines used, but you got to be sure that you need hydrofos and your doctor, I guess, is the guy who needs to decide that. So would you recommend calcium to, uh, to be taken every day? So calcium requirement is uh, in in um, growing uh, the growing population, that is kids, and uh, pregnant mothers and nursing mothers and postmenopausal women that forms a group is about 1000 milligrams a day. Uh, we in, uh, You consume it through your, through stuff that you eat. So we in short, all postmenopausal women should take at least one pill of calcium, which uh, gives you uh, 250 milligrams of essential calcium, which is actually a 500 milligram tablet. So a, cal a 500 milligram tablet of calcium a day should suffice your needs after menopause. So would you, uh, is there any particular like Shell Cal or something that you would recommend? So all these are brand names. They all are more or less the same. So whatever goes well with your gut doesn't cause constipation is okay. Calcium citrate malleate is right now the most popular one because uh, CCM or Gem Cal, those ones, because it has very little to do with diet. So you can have it anytime in the day. Uh, for example, calcium carbonate should be had only at night. And, uh, you know, there's another calcium uh, uh, phosphate, I think even I'm, I'm wrong footed here, should be had on an empty stomach. So those rules go away when you have a calcium citrate malate. But you can have any, even chuna. You could have chuna and say that you're having your calcium because it's the same. Sir, Shalkel 500, alternate day, so I'm 80 plus. Is it okay? Yeah, that's cool. That is cool. Cool. But okay. they say calcium, they form the, this thing on the arteries, they made the calcification. Is it good? Is it right? Yeah, that's if you take three three shell cals a day, Lakshmi. If you're okay. taking one shell cal a day or even one... No, no, no. Alternate, alternate day or... days I take. Alternate yeah, days. Absolutely days. safe. Absolutely safe. Because the myth here is that if, if you're going to develop calcification in your aorta or in your blood vessels, you will develop it without taking calcium because there's a big supply of calcium in your bones. So calcification of a soft tissue or of a vessel is a disease process in itself. Taking calcium will not cause it unless you're, of course, overdosing like crazy, which none of us would do. But by not taking calcium, you're not going to be able to prevent it. Instead so, of alternate you know, days, can I make it as a thrice a week? Uh, you should. I would say make it once a day. Uh -huh. Once a day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Like my mom takes it once a day. My mom takes uh, calcium once a day. Doctor, yeah. uh, I have throughout me, my body, wherever oh, scanning is done, it's, it's calcium. Uh, I had okay. my heart also. And they have done angioplasty. I was thinking it is too much of calcium. So it is not. It's not the calcium that you ate rather. It is a disease in your intima, in the artery, which is causing calcification. 
and like i said your bone is an unending supply of calcium even an osteoporotic bone has a huge amount of calcium because there's so much bone in your body so that's where it gets borrowed from and it gets put in the wrong place so by not having calcium it will not uh, you know reduce your chance of getting calcification but if you are a clear cut case of calcification it's good to consult your doctor the cardiologist who's treating you but uh, in a nutshell i think a 500 mg tablet every day will not be uh, will be okayed by your cardiologist okay yeah thank yes. you uh, <laughs> finally raise your hand please we'll take your questions because there are questions uh, on the chat which i would like to take we'll come to you definitely or put your uh, question on the chat is pelvic tilt, tilt same as pulling the stomach inside no, 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 no. Pelvic tilt is uh, something that uh, physiotherapists try to hard sell. So when you sit down, the way your butt is placed is really what is the pelvic tilt. Okay, so many of us, we would, we would like slide down. So the butt actually gets hidden. The easy trick is to stick your bum out when you sit. When you stick your bum out, your pelvis is tilted behind and that re restores the arch of your back. Remember when you stand up, your back has an arch. Why is there an arch? Because the center of gravity is shifted behind. The minute you sit, the pelvis moves forward and the arch gets into a bent position, the reverse arch position. And that's that amount to bending forward. So you want to sit with your back upright and your back arched. When you stand, you don't want to overarch the back or underarch the back. So the pelvic tilt is to do with that. Sucking the stomach in is adding an ab abdominal reinforcement to your spine. So there are two different things. Will Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you work? so much. Will protein supplements work? Uh, they do work, but, but they, it's not magic. So protein supplements along with calcium, vitamin D, along with treatment of osteoporosis if you need to, and exercise, then it works. If you don't have osteoporosis, for example, me, I don't have osteoporosis because I'm a 51-year-old male. I honestly, I've not checked, but I'm not supposed to be checking. Uh, I just have proteins and I do exercises. So I skip the in-between part. But if I have protein and don't do exercise, it's going to go nowhere. It's going to become fat. Protein gets converted to fat and I'm going to add to the tires that I already have. Okay. So how much does the lumbar sacral belt help? Uh, so it's a cheat. It's a cheat abdomen. Abdominal. So it's, you know, girls wear these, um, uh, uh, what's, what's it called? The, the stuff that they wear inside to hide their tummy in the, when they're wearing a dress. That's exactly right. corset, what the, corset. Corset. Like corset. That's what exactly it? what a lumbosacral belt does. It gives you a cheat abdomen. So when you wear it, it's in a way good. But during that time, the muscle is chilling. And if the muscle is chilling, it's not performing. And the muscle starts getting dependent. And actually, you lose muscle strength by wearing this belt. So you should use it discretionally as a bailout. But you should work on your abdomen and make that as an internal lumbosacral belt, which will last you all your life. What is the internal lumbosacral belt? Your abdominal muscle. Ah, okay. <laughs> so if your abdominal muscle becomes tight, you have a yeah. permanent LS belt and that's your own. All right. So how helpful is triaparatide for osteoporosis? So teriparatide is the third tire medicine. I, we talked about hydrophos or ibendronate or uh, the weekly tablet, monthly tablet. Then there's a six monthly injection called denizumab, which is the second tire. And teriparatide is the best medicine currently available for osteoporosis, a daily self-administered injection. Uh, the problem there is that it can be taken only for 30 months in your life, which is an awfully short time, just two and a half years. So again, it has to be used discretionally. Is it put on your stomach? That small needle has to be put? Is it yeah, the same? anywhere where there's fat. It's a subcutaneous yeah, injection. So you can put it on your thigh, on your stomach, anywhere where you have a load of fat. When you pinch, like you can't use it in your forearm because there's no fat, but you can use it on the stomach, the thigh typically, yeah. Okay, CCM, vitamin D3. And How does the calcineral work, sir? Calcineral. Uh, calcineral satchel. Please mute everyone, Nandini. Please mute everyone. Yeah, thank you. Uh, CCM, vitamin D3 and folic acid should be taken. When should we take this? So CCM is calcium citrate malleate. It can be taken once a day at any time of the day. Uh, vitamin D was the second one. I'm sorry, Andy, the correct? So vitamin right, D. Right. So vitamin D3 so and six... folic acid. So typically, uh, for a person whose vitamin D levels are normal on an annual check, uh, one tablet of 60,000 units of vitamin D, so like an uprise 60K to be taken once a month is adequate. And folic acid, again, once a day with random breaks. Folic acid, uh, can never you can never have too much of it. So taking more folic acid is no problem, but once a day is okay and then, you know, take random breaks. 
Okay. Uh, did uh, did oh, sorry, they she did not know that calcium carbonate has to be taken at night. Okay, that was a good mm. uh, information. Um, for absorption of calcium, is it recommended to have it with vitamin C? Uh, it's not been proven. There's a again. Uh, I'm missing that. I'm missing that information. But between carbonate and sulfate, one of them needs vitamin C for absorption. So today, you know, being low IQ surgeons, we just give everyone calcium carbonate, uh, calcium citrate malate, because that that does not need anything for absorption. It just goes in. So that's the go-to medicine today. Okay, Shell Cal XT is it contains calcium D three and vitamin B twelve. Is it okay to take it every day? It's okay, but it's not any better than plain Shell Cal because calcium is a very heavy mineral, heavy heavy part of the tablet. So when you consume this tablet, the body is busy absorbing the calcium and the rest of the items go to waste. So you'd rather have calcium separate and vitamin D separate and uh, vitamin C or whatever else separately at different times. And uh, Shobha, you can please unmute and ask your question. Shobha, yeah, good evening, doctor. Uh, uh, so please, you okay, okay. please hold so on. Fun. Please raise your hand. Please raise your hand. Hello. Shobha, go ahead. Yes, I've been taking those six monthly injection, one and six months. I've taken five till now, and the bone density also has improved. I'm 70. How long can I continue taking that? So, denizumab is permissible for 10 years, but if you're 70 and healthy, we want to make it last for 20 years. So, typically, you know, every two years, we reassess you in with all those questions, apart, apart from a DEXA, all the other health parameters, and okay. we try to find a treatment window where we can stop treatment and try to add those two years later. This okay. is an off-label method. It's a Jugard, Indian Jugard, because the US FDA says that once you start, you need to continue it for 10 years and then stop. But in reality, okay. every two years, we take a break and figure out you know, how, how, uh, whether we can give you a break. It's safe to have it for some time now. I've taken for two years. Okay. Doctor, can we have Supradin every day? And along with that, is calcium necessary? That yes, calcium is calcium is the raw material. Denizumab is the factory, and exercise are the demand. So all three are necessary. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. So supradin is a multivitamin. A multivitamin yeah. is needed if you're nutritionally or uh, absorptionally challenged. For example, I don't cons uh, consume a uh, multivitamin every day. So there's no harm in taking one every day, but uh, you yes, don't necessarily need it. Of uh, D three. I beg your pardon. It has 400 IU of uh, D3 in it. So yeah. is it okay to take it every day? Yeah, so, you know, it doesn't translate correctly because, you know, vitamin D should be, according to me, taken independent, standalone. And the correct, because vitamin D is a vitamin that stays in your body. So a 60,000 unit vitamin every month is far easier than taking a supradin every day, thinking that you're getting your vitamin D. Got it. Yeah. Uh, Shobha, can you unmute and ask, please? Shobha? Shubha, go ahead. Yeah. I am taking Supracol. 65 years old. Osteoporosis yes. suffering. That's cool. To take Supracol every day, it's all good. But continuously, uh, you I must can take that. Continuously, I can, I can take her. Huh? Yes, continuously, you can take one a day is absolutely safe. For three okay. years, two years, okay. Yes, yes, lifelong. Yeah. Lifelong, Sudha, I can take her. Ask, lifelong, you can take. Oh, okay, doctor. Sudha, unmute. Sudha. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Sunil Dhawan. Hello. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Sudha. Hello, Hello doctor. Uh, what is the role of collagen? What's the role of collagen sackets in uh, knee arthritis? And so, what can uh, we do like to I improve? Sorry? So, I mentioned before, cartilage can never regenerate. But okay. uh, because all of us are challenged with cartilage problems, and if if you're not, you will be very soon. Uh, yeah, people yeah. are selling a lot of a lot of stuff, uh, you know, to try to regenerate cartilage. Collagen becomes one of them. We still mm -hmm. don't have a hard proof that it works. But being okay. a natural substance rather than a medicine, uh, mm -hmm. collagen and uh, glucosamine and these structures which are not cartilage, uh, cartilage food, yes. Yeah, so those are the stuff that people have been trying. But there's no hard proof, but there's no side effect. So in okay. my practice, I would say that if you're getting knee pain, you try this. If it works for you, you're lucky. Continue taking it. If it doesn't okay. work, your knee pain doesn't go away. Just chuck it because we don't have hard evidence. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Do we have to give a break for okay. the thank traditional you. tablets? Thank you. Sir? Excuse me. Sir, shall we can, do we have to give a break? There's no, no need please, to take please. a break. There's no need. You can take one tablet a day for all your life, but don't take longer than that. I mean, don't take more than that. Longer, you can't take longer than all your life. Yeah, we have put a link on the chat. So anybody who's joined in new, please do click on the link and fill out the form for us. It's very important. So we keep in touch with you. And as well as we'll know uh, what kind of session would be helpful to all of you. Uh, one last question, doctor. What about the knee cartilage? You said once it is worn out, uh, it's just impossible to uh, replace it back. So then what happens? So you learn to work with it. For example, uh, at 50, I used, to, I used to run five times a week. Now at 50, I choose that one day to run. So I'm working with my cartilage rather than, uh, you know, because I know it's going to go south. Separately, you work on your body weight. So you make sure the load on your uh, knee is becoming less on a 24-7 basis and work on your quadriceps. Your quadriceps, just like your abdominal muscle helps your back, your quadriceps muscle helps your... So doing 30-degree squats, one-third squats, doing something to or cycling, Something to strengthen your uh, the the thigh muscle, which will take the load off the cartilage. I think these are enough to uh, you know last you a lifetime because your the activities that you did from zero to fifty are quite different than the activities that you expected to do from fifty to hundred. You see, so you should be able to live with that cartilage for longer rather than to get in and you know replace it by doing a knee replacement operation. So, would you recommend aqua exercises for that? Yeah, aqua is great. Aqua is great. Cycling is great as a generic form. 100%. Okay. One. Okay. One last question. Uh, can we eat tuna for calcium? Yes, I think you, you can, can, but we don't know the source and we don't know the quantity. So rather than tuna, it may be easier to take. But that's for sure that village village women who eat tuna in their pan regularly are not necessary. They, they are a lower uh, you know, batch of osteoporotics. So that's for sure that tuna has good calcium. But the we don't know the question. specifics. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. May I ask a question? Sunil, please uh, unmute and ask your question. Sunil? Sunil? May I go ahead? No, no. It please. was by mistake. It was by mistake. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. okay. Maria? Maria, please go ahead. Maria, unmute and ask your question, Maria. Uh, excuse me? Uh -huh. uh, can uh -huh. you hear me now? Maria, we can hear you now. Yes. Okay, so speaking of this cartilage loss, I had done total knee replacement for both my knees. Okay. Now I find that I have a back problem, the lower number three and number four. So is it related? Yeah, it's related because if you've had knee replacement, your cartilages have uh, put their hands up and said that they're weak because other ladies of your age don't have necessarily have had knee replacement. So uh, it's, it's like if you have gray hair here, when you turn around, you yeah, exactly. So sixty-five yeah. is not the not not a common age to have knee replacement. You know, it's normally beyond seventy. Your cartilage suppose. So once you've had a knee replacement, you've, it's already established that you've got weak cartilages. So the other cartilages, so the spine and the hip, are already going to be in the pipeline. So you may as well imagine you're going to have a problem and start working on it if you don't have have still. So basically, so prehabilitation, yeah. prehabilitation, so control your body weight, increase your exercises for the trunk. Uh, work on your postures through, you know, better reading or understanding or consulting someone or a, like a physical therapist and make sure that your nutrition is fine. So before you reach the problem, you solve it. Unfortunately, by telling you these secrets, my business gets, uh, goes lower and lower, but I'm happy. <laughs> Thank you no, so much, doctor. Doctor. That was doctor. Absolutely... Where are you? <laughs> no, no, you don't have to consult. More this, this is the consult. This is you the are very popular, doctor. You are very popular. <laughs> Thank you, Anaita. Where are you based? Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And thank you so much, Doctor. What about magnesium and B12? Uh, excuse me. Anita, can I ask a question? So we are off time, please. Thank you. We will we will come back with Dr. Nene again once more uh, whenever he's free. But thank you so much. And we look forward to somebody recommended by you for physiotherapy, like you said. I think that would be uh, really... Yeah, that would be great. That would be great. I'll, I'll set someone up the minute uh, you raise a request, okay? Absolutely. I think that would be great. All I'll right. Cheers. It was lovely Thank being with you. you. So I'm so very much. well spent. Thank, Thank you again. You. Thank, Thank you, you, Anita. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Anita. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Anita. Thank you, uh, Doctor Anita. Water session.